I wish I hadn't wasted those days with my first newborn feeling devastated because actually the reality is we had nothing to fear. Knowing what I know now, that's my biggest regret. I wouldn't have shed a single tear. We were told probably about nine to 12 hours after he was born that um, they suspected Kush had Down syndrome. Then the doctors just apologised, kept apologising and said, we think he's got clinical features of Down syndrome and just kept apologising as if he had died. We found out that Lucas had Down syndrome uh, 45 minutes after my C-section. So I was still in recovery. Um, it was a massive shock. The midwife said that she looked like she might have Down syndrome. Um, she also said it might be just because she's got a round face like her dad, which was quite amusing. <laughs> Um, I was very scared when Lois was born. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to um, be a good mum to her. I was worried about the health issues. I had this really dark vision of what my life would be like and what Lois's life would be like. And it's just not the case. And if you just take one day at a time. I was very upset. Um, just kept thinking of his future. But it was like a bolt from the blue. I had no warning. When we were first told, I'm ashamed to, to say now that I was, I was devastated. You know, our world fell apart there and then. I was really anxious about the future for us as a family and for, also for Kush. In the 70s and 80s, um, people with Down syndrome were kept separate. I assumed um, that he wouldn't be able to walk until he was five or six, possibly later. Actually, Lucas walked at 15 months. I remember when he was young, feeling, just having the realisation at about probably three weeks old that, you know, he was never going to be a fireman. He was, you know, he's never going to be a, a surgeon. Um, and at the time, that was, you know, usually your kids can be anything. At the time, that really hit home. But actually now, I, I think Lucas can be whatever he, he wants to be. And that's increasing year on year when I, I see him develop. I've realised that Lois is her own person. It's not all about the Down syndrome. And, you know, I'm very proud that she has it and she rocks her extra chromosome, but it's not the whole picture. Lois is funny and caring, kind, stubborn. Um. Very funny. She makes us laugh every day. Kush is incredibly cheeky. Um, he's got the best smile in the world and laugh, haven't you? Yeah. You amazing? Yeah. yeah. My best boy? In the world. In the world. If I had to describe Lucas, I would say he is extraordinary. He's very cheeky though. Contrary to when she was born, my first fear was that she was never going to speak, is that she never stops talking. Intelligent, fun, caring little boy who just loves life. It's very sociable. Um, I don't think I've ever met anyone as sociable. Lucas and his older sister Isabella have an amazing relationship. When I tell people that I've got a brother with Down syndrome, the, the first thing they always say to me is, I'm sorry. And to me, it's not something to be sorry about. I love him just as he is. Lucas, are you going to say hello? I use sign language to, to communicate with Lucas because Lucas is non-verbal, so he can't speak to me. Say so my name is Lucas. No. Lucas, good boy. He can tell me what exactly what he wants, and it's just really helpful. It's been really helpful with us as a family, so we can communicate with him. <laughs> You're a cheeky monkey. Yeah. I think the biggest misconception is that People with Down syndrome can't achieve and they don't have as much to offer as other people. She is going to do everything that everybody else can do, but with a bit of extra help. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. You speak to a lot of doctors and it is very, very negative. We really need to change that because it's not, ne it's not negative. <laughs> Lucas, stop. Listen. Yeah, it has challenges, but, you know, I've got three other children and equally they come with their own challenges and sometimes their challenges are worse than Lucas and, and vice versa. So now it's, it's just the most normalised thing to me ever. I think it's getting better and it's changing, but I still think there's quite a lot of ignorance out there. 
people's perceptions need to change and in order to change perception they need to be more aware which is why we try and raise awareness as much as we can. I think we just need more inclusion. There's still a long way to go. I think year on year it's getting massively better but obviously there's always room for improvement. Our key goal is independence. We want him to be independent, to have a job, to have friends um, and to be happy. And go! We want him to be included in society, not pushed away, not ignored. <laughs> if I were to give advice to someone who had just received a diagnosis. It's okay if you feel frightened or afraid or alone and you panic. Don't worry, everything's going to be fine. You can do this. You make it work and it will work. You know, you'll have the same challenges as you have with your other children. There's some great online networks for people, um, parents with kids with Down syndrome. It's really not that scary as it feels like at the start. And your child will be your biggest teacher. You'll learn from that child and that child will learn from you. You'll get through it and it'll be great. For now, your child is just a baby and he or she needs what any baby needs and that is a parent that loves them. Cheeky. Cheeky. <laughs> You're a monkey, aren't you? Yeah.